the natural exponential function and rates of change. The textbook coyly suggests that the natural exponential function, f of t equals e to the t, is significant for reasons beyond its appearance in situations involving continuous change. In this activity, you will examine one interesting property of the natural exponential function. This activity involves the calculus notion of determining rate of change at a specific value of the variable. One, suppose we're interested in finding the rate of change of f, f for this whole activity is this e to the t function, at t equals zero. A, what is f of zero? f of zero, according to the formula highlighted here in yellow, is e to the zero, which is one. Find the average rate of change of f between t equals zero and t equals one. Remember that the average rate of change is given by that formula. So what we need to do here is f of, okay, so it says b first. It makes no difference whether you think zero is b or 0.1 is b. I'm going to say that uh, the 0.1 is the b, 0.1 minus f of a, that's f of zero, divided by, and then you got to put these in the same order, 0.1 minus zero. Okay, uh, on the bottom it's just 0.1. Minus f of zero, we just found up above, is one. So really the only thing we need to do is find e to the 0.1, and then whatever we get here will be our answer. So this is what we're going to type in. So on the calculator, uh, parentheses are on the top, second e to the 0.1, don't forget to close the parentheses, minus 1, close the parentheses, divide by 0.1, and we get 1.0517. Part C, find the average rate of change of f between t equals 0 and t equals 0.01. So what we're doing here is trying to find the rate of change of f at t equals zero, and we're going to do that by picking a number, uh, one number is zero, and the other number is going to be something very close to zero. So we just found the average rate of change between zero and 0 0.1. That's a tiny little interval. And now we're about to find the rate of change between zero and 0 0.01. That's an even smaller interval, and we're just going to keep squeezing in on t equals zero. So, uh, same formula, f of b minus f of a, so this is now f of 0 0.01 minus f of 0 divided by 0 0.01 minus 0. So that's e to the 0 0.01, f of 0 is still 1, downstairs is 0 0.01. So we can come back to the calculator, I'll do second entry and try to save some typing. So we need a 0 0.01 there and we need a 0 0.01 here. Second insert, zero. So 1.005, And we're going to do, I think, one more like this, and we're going to try to find a trend in this set of numbers. So 1.05, 1.005. We want to know if these appear to be approaching anything. So part D, average rate of change between 0 and 0 0.01. Well, why don't we just jump right to the punchline. Second entry feels like all we got to do is change these 0.01s to 0.001s. So we'll insert one more zero here. I think that's right. 1.0005. What seems to be a reasonable value for the rate of change of f at t equals zero? So I will just write down the answers to part, parts b and c, 1.05 and 1.005, and now we see yet another zero in there. It sure feels like things are tending to one. Two, now consider the rate of change of f at t equals one. What is the value, what is f of one? So I'll put up here at the top again that f of t is still e to the t. I'll highlight it in yellow just like on the other side. So what is f of 1? f of 1 is e to the 1. And from the calculator, or maybe you just remember, about 2.718. B, estimate the rate of change of f at t equals 1 by the process you used above. 
by looking at the rate of change on smaller intervals, including one. You may need to use a smaller interval than in number one to get a good estimate. Okay, so we'll go back to basics. F of B, so rate of change, is F of B minus F of A over B minus A. So how about we start? Uh, we're going to include intervals that uh, end on one. So it used to be, um, used to be we were looking at you know zero to 0 0.1, and then to 0 0.01, and then to 0 0.001. But now we've got to get numbers not close to zero but close to one. So how about we look at the rate of change between one and 1.01, one and 1.001, and then one more. 1 and 1.001. 1. So let's write out the first one and then we'll use the calculator to help us zip through the others. F of B minus F of A. F of 1.01 .01 minus F of 1 divided by 1.01 .01 .01 minus 1. Okay, F of 1.01 .01 is E to the 1.01 .01 .01 minus F of 1 is E, or E to the first, divided by 0.01. So we're going to type this into the calculator. So let's try. Uh, maybe we can get away with using this guy. Okay, so now we have e to the 1.01. .01, and now we're not subtracting 1 anymore. We're subtracting e to the first power. And then we're dividing this thing by uh, 0.01. Okay, so we can hit enter on this one, and that number is not right. What did we do wrong here? Let's try again. So I think we're missing some parentheses right here. To close the parentheses around the whole numerator. Okay, that's more reasonable. So 2.732, 2.7319, we'll write that. Okay, and then we'll do the same thing, but just stick another zero into the two different places. Second, enter. So now we'll go zero, zero, one. And then we'll insert a zero here. So that's a tinier interval, 2.7196. Hmm, not too far from this number. And then we'll do one more while we're here, and then we'll write down our results. One more zero. One more zero, and we get that. Okay, so 2.7196, 2.7185. Let's make sure I got those copied down correctly. 2.7196, 2.7185. I don't know where I saw five. I should be four. Okay, and do these numbers appear to be approaching anything? Well, 2.73, 2.719, 2.718, it appears that these numbers are decreasing. And is there any nice number, any number that we know about that's somewhere around this? Because it's not decreasing much more than that. 2.718, wait a second. 2.718 is E. Okay, let's explore just a little bit more. I guess we'll say maybe the answer is E. That's me writing with a mouse. Pretty good, huh? So is the answer E? Is that possible? So let's uh, let's get a little bit more accuracy here. Let's just type in E here, second E. Okay, so this is really E, and this is what we just got is our rate of change. Let's maybe do one or two more of these rates of change. Let's stick in another zero up here as well. Okay, E is that. Are we getting closer? 2.71829 instead of 28. That's pretty compelling. How about one more zero? Okay, it's that. Let's remind ourselves of what E really is. 2.71828, and now we're at a 3, and it should be at a 1.8. That's pretty darn close. Feels like somehow the rate of change of this curve at t equals 1 
is E. Okay, next one is the rate of change of F at uh, T equals two. So we want F2, an exact and a numeric approximation. So the exact F2 is E to the two. If we type this into a calculator, we'll find E squared is 7.389056. Putting lots of digits, I'm not going to write them all down, but just so that we have E squared up there. We want to estimate the rate of change of F at T equals 2, same process that we used above. Okay, so we'll write down one example and then we'll use the calculator to zip through the calculations. So for example, maybe we want to do F of 2.01 minus F of 2. Remember now we're looking at intervals that end at 2 divided by 2.01 minus 2. So this is E to the 2.01 minus E to the 2 divided by 0.01. So this is the kind of formula that we're looking for. And then we'll get this and use the calculator to find some better estimates. All right, so uh, let's see. We need parentheses e to the 2.01 subtract e squared divided by 0.01. 7.426. Okay, that number doesn't look like anything to me. Maybe it does to you. Second enter, what if we stick in an extra zero in both places? Seven point three nine two seven. Okay, does that number look familiar? Doesn't really ring a bell for me, but maybe you see it. How about we get real greedy here? We'll stick in two more zeros. Let's just cut to the chase. Seven point three eight nine. Oh, 09. Does that number look familiar? Well, pretty darn close to this number right here. So, uh, feels like potentially the final answer here is that the rate of change is about e squared. At t equals 2, the instantaneous rate of change is e squared. At t equals 1, the rate of change was e, which I guess is e to the 1. And let's see if that pattern continued back here. At t equals 0, the rate of change sure looked like it was uh, 1, which is e to the 0. Next page. No, maybe there's something down here. Oh, yeah. Four, can you make a conjecture about the rate of change of f at t equals a, and can you interpret this in terms of the graph? So our conjecture is that the rate of change is e to the, let's see, when it was uh, t equals 2, it was e squared. t equals 1 was e to the first. t equals a feels like maybe e to the a. Interpretation is very difficult, but essentially the uh, slope of a curve, we haven't really defined that, and we really won't, but in calculus that's a big deal. But the slope of the, um, of the f of t equals e to the t curve is basically the same as the y value. Whatever y value you're on, I'll just draw the graph, and I think we'll see the graph of this function in more detail very soon. But if I'm graphing y equals e to the t, maybe something like that. So the slope of the curve at this point is 1. It's that, that's the rate of change there. And then if I jump out here to um, the point where t is equal to 1, then the slope of the curve at that point looked like it was about e. And one more, if you jump out here to t equals 2, slope of the curve there sure look like e squared. It's a really strange property, and pretty much um, e to the t is the only function that has that property.